chapter 22 or chapter 23, depending on which book you're using, is going to talk about amines and the derivatives of the amines. And amines are very common compounds. I have four biologically active amines here. The first one on the left is uh, cocaine. Notice that it's a tertiary amine. It does have two esters on the other side, but the amine is right here. Nicotine has two nitrogens, and both of them uh, are basic, and it's found in, toba in tobacco. This one is mescaline, and this right over here, that's your amine. And that nitrogen is attached to one carbon, so it's a primary amine. This one right here is morphine, so it's found in opium poppies, and it's another tertiary amine. And when you, act, you find an amine in nature, they also call them alkaloids. So all these compounds right here are classified as alkaloids because they're natural products. First, you have to start by classifying the amine. We have primary, secondary, and tertiary amine. And you count how many alkyl groups are attached to the nitrogen. So this nitrogen right here, it has one carbon attached to it. It doesn't matter how long the carbon chain is. It just matters that it has only one uh, alkyl group attached to it. So it's classified as a primary amine. This nitrogen has two carbons attached to it, so it's classified as a secondary amine. And this one has one, two, three, three carbons attached to the nitrogen, so this is a tertiary amine. All these nitrogens, again, have a lone pair of electrons. We do have another amine, type of amine, and it would be when you have four groups attached to it. They don't need to be the same group, but when you have four groups attached to it, the nitrogen, of course, it's going to be positive. There's going to be a counter ion associated with it, and this is just an ammonium salt. So you refer to it as an ammonium salt, tetraalkyl ammonium salt. These are the ones that we're going to be working with. The first, we need to learn how to name them. And when you learn, uh, when you learn the UPAC system, you know that you have to take the longest chain of carbons that you can find. And then you also have to identify the most important functional group in the molecule. So this one right here, the most important functional group in this little tiny molecule is the amine right here. It's a primary amine. And I have two carbon carbons attached to it in the form of an ethyl. So the common name for this amine is ethyl amine. So there's an ethyl and the compound is an amine. So this is a common name. So you tell me what alkyl groups the nitrogen has attached to it. And then you tell me that it's an amine at the very end. Notice this one. I have two ethyl groups right here. There's a parenthesis and there's a two. So there's two ethyls and I also have a methyl attached to it. When you tell me the, the names of the substituents, try to give them to me in alphabetical order. So diethyl methyl amine. This one is a tertiary amine. Notice that I have two methyls on this side. I have a cyclohexane attached to the nitrogen. We're going to call it a cyclohexyl with a Y and an L because it's a substituent attached to the nitrogen. So cyclohexyl dimethylamine. This one is a secondary amine and I have two phenyl groups attached to the nitrogen. So diphenylamine. If the amine is not the most important substituent on the compound, then you have to name it as a, just a substituent. So for example, this one right here, I have a nitrogen, an amine, sorry, and I have a double bond. The double bond is going to take precedence over the amine. So I am going to name this, the parent name would be cyclopentene, and the nitrogen is attached to the cyclopentene and you have to remember what we learned in the first semester of organic chemistry. The carbons of the double bond are going to get 1 and 2. And you try to give the substituents that are attached to the ring the lowest possible number. So I have to start on this one as 1 so that my amine can get number 3. So this is 3-amino cyclopentene. This one right here. 
I have the amine on this side, but on the other side I have a carboxylic acid. The carboxylic acid takes precedence. So I'm going to end my name, well, one, two, three, four. I'm going to end my name in butyric acid. And the nitrogen is on carbon one, two, three, four. So if you want to call this compound four aminobutanoic acid, or if you want to use the Greek numbering system, gamma aminobutyric acid. This one right here has an alcohol. Alcohols have higher priorities. So this is a cyclohexanol that just happens to have an amino group attached to it. You have to specify that the, ox uh, the OH and the NH2, those are on opposite sides of the ring, so they're trans. And the amino would be on carbon 3 of the ring, so I have trans 3 amino cyclohexanol. This is benzoic acid and there's a nitrogen on position 4, so you could call it 4-aminobenzoic acid, but it's more common to call it para-aminobenzoic acid. Now when you have the UPAC names, you again find the longest possible chain and we're going to drop the, al the E of the alkane and we're going to replace it with amine. So for example, this one right here, my longest chain is one, two, three, four, five, five carbons. So this is a pentane, but I'm dropping the E and I am going to put an amine in its place. So it's a pentanamine. And this one happens to have a bromide on carbon number three. Yes, carbon number three. So this is three bromo pentanamine. Don't leave any spaces. The UPAC system don't like you to leave spaces. This one right here, the longest chain is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a hexanamine. And I'm going to put the numbers right here because, four, five, six, because my nitrogen is on the third carbon of the hexanamine and the nitrogen happens to have two methyls attached to it. So we're going to combine all the things we have learned. So if the nitrogen has alkyl groups attached to it, then you're going to be very redundant and you're going to give me a capital N for any substitu extra substituents you have. I have two of the same, so I put the two ends together. Use the replicatory prefix di, and it's a dimethyl. And the nitrogen is on carbon 3 of my hexanamine. So, so far we just keep doing what we've learned before. In terms of aromatic amines, when we studied benzene, we learned that this compound right here, the common name for it is aniline. So this is going to be the parent name whenever you actually have an amino group attached to the benzene ring. So for example, right here, I have my aniline right there, and I happen to have an ethyl attached to it. Since I'm going to use the parent name, remember that the carbon that bears the NH2 is going to be number one, and the ethyl would be located on carbon number two. So the, com the name of this is 2-ethylaniline. Now, this ethyl is attached to the benzene ring. These two ethyls right here are attached to the nitrogen, so I have to make sure I specify that. So I put two capital N's because I have two ethyls, and I still use the replicatory prefix di. So NN diethyl aniline. Now this one right here, again, the nitrogen is more important than a methyl, so I would still be able to use the aniline parent name and the methyl would be on position number four. If you want to call it para, you can do it. You can call it the four methyl aniline. Now this is aniline, this is toluene, they have combined the names and there's a common name for this one and it's toluidine. I prefer if you call it 4-methyl aniline. 